We are on Yud Amid uh, Base. Um, our Yud Aleph Amid Base, eleven uh, B. So the, the uh, Mishnah uh, had said that the Yetzia Chayet, the Machta is Samach Lach Hashem. A person, uh, a a, a um, tailor, should not walk out with his um, with his uh, um, uh, needle, his sewing utensil, uh, prior to Shabbos. And the Mishnah uh, was is going to assess that uh, What we have over here is we have a um, a, 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 a gather to a gather, a fence to a fence, a zero to zero. Why is that? Because we have um, Friday. There's no prohibition of doing work. But don't do it on Friday because maybe you're going to go out on Shabbos. And what's the work on Shabbos itself? The work on Shabbos itself is going to be a Durabanan because he's carrying it in his, in, in, in his, uh, over his ear or um, in his, um, tucked in his clothing, which is not a normal way of carrying it. That's a good morning's question I'm about to see. And this is based on the, yesterday's question of whether um, somebody drinking from another domain, even a Durabanan domain, like a, a, a Carmelist, is not allowed to drink because it's going to, um, uh, not allowed to drink because it's, uh, uh, he, maybe he's going to bring the vessel back. And even though that itself is a durabana, uh, it's only rabbinically prohibited to, to carry from a karmas. Karmas is not a Dora domain. And nevertheless, um, Abayi says you're not allowed to do it. And so he's going to prove it from our Mishnah, where the Mishnah says carrying something uh, tucked in your lapel tuck, or, or in your ear is going to be prohibited. And um, um, even Arab Shabbos. And the assumption that the Gemara is working off of is that this is an abnormal way of carrying this item and as such really should not be prohibited. Midar Isa. The Rabbanan going to say don't carry it even in an abnormal way, but it's not going to be a Torah prohibition. Tanan. It's about 12 lines in. Uh, in our mission, it says that the tailor should not walk out um, with, with his machat, with his needle near Shabbos, close to Shabbos, because if he does so, he will be carrying um, and uh, he may forget and walk into Shabbos that way. My love, the Tehuvah Lebe Big Day, wouldn't you assume that? Uh, when it says he shouldn't walk out with his needle, it means the way he normally would tuck it in his clothing, um, uh, stick it into his clothing so that he not lose it. So he says, and therefore, that's proof to Abaya, that even though that carrying itself in such a manner is rabbinically prohibited, because Medaraisa, it's an abnormal way of carrying it would not be prohibited. And uh, um, uh, additionally, it's Friday, and he was saying, don't do it, because lest you may come to do it on Shabbos. So that's a gzeru, a gzeru. It's a double gzeru. The carrying itself is rabbinic. It's a rabbanan. And then we're going to say, the rabbanan are going to say, don't carry on Friday, because maybe you're going to do it on Shabbos. Now, that's not the case at all. We're not talking about that it's tucked in his, his garment. It's talking about that that's the, that he's holding it. Tashama, so we're going to try and prove from this b'risa. It says explicitly he shouldn't walk out with it tucked in his garment. My love, bear of Shabbos. Wouldn't you say that's talking about on Friday? And then we see that even on Friday, you're not allowed to carry it, um, it tucked in your garment. Maybe you're going to carry it on Shabbos. And even though carrying it on Shabbos this way is not the biblical, not the b'risa prohibited, it's a Dorabana. Umar says, look, kitan yahi b'shabbos. No, that's talking about on Shabbos itself, not on Friday. Anyway, Zara, what about this price of Atani? We learned, it says explicitly, you should not walk out with, a gar- with his needle stuck in his garment, the Arab Shabbos on a Friday, before it gets dark, or as it's getting dark, because maybe he's going to carry it on Shabbos. That's the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, who holds that it's not objectively normal or abnormal carrying, and therefore objectively uh, carrying a needle um, uh, tucked over your ear or, uh, or tucked in your lapel is not a typical way of walking out, but rather review the holds it's subjective. If you're a tailor, that's normal for you to carry it that way. 
if you're a carpenter, it's normal for you to have a pencil over your, uh, your ear. If, uh, and, and that would be fine. And that would be a Torah prohibition of carrying, even though for someone else, that's not the, the norm. And therefore for him, it's not carrying. So it would depend on uh, the position of the person. It's because it's a clear voider? Well, it's a muxa problem or what? Uh, what? One second. So uh, uh, I'll get to that in a second. So Uman, a smith or a, or a laborer, the clear monase, in the manner within which his field carries this, chayev is going to be chayev, that's going to be a biblical Torah prohibition. Now, um, uh, uh, what are these things? Tanya, we have a, a, a brysa. Uh, a tailor shouldn't walk out with a needle stuck in his garment. And uh, a, a woodworker shouldn't walk out with uh, a ruler. Um, Their the rulers were basically a, a very straight, um, uh, uh, long twig, a long uh, a peg. And uh, uh, um, someone who... who um, uh, is a, a um, works with uh, with cloth with uh, with um, um, threads, the uh, mashicha, which is some sort of uh, um, um, twine of sorts. Shaba aznai over his, his ear. and a, a weaver shouldn't go out with the ira is some some sort of uh, uh, plug that they would use for for the uh, shuttle. I think it's called. And a, someone who dyes wool uh, with, um, uh, cl- uh, with uh, uh, wool um, samples of, around his neck. And a, a, a shulchani is a, a, a money changer, um, a banker with a coin over his ear. But if he did, he will be exempt. He doesn't have to bring a chatas because it's the rabbana. Now, these are very peculiar things to wear over your ear. So Rashi, Rashi says in the first that these were, this was to keep it handy. So he had something handy wherever he went. But the second version, Rashi says, that could be what these, these were sort of trade symbols. Uh, these were uh, a, a, um, a way to tell everybody in the marketplace who you were, so it was your advertisement. Uh, you you w- would wear something over your shoulder, and uh, what you're wearing over your shoulder, uh, over your ear, uh, on your lapel, around your neck, told everyone what trade you were in, and it was a form of, uh, of uh, uh, advertising yourself. Um, either way, uh, it would be abnormal for anyone else. And so subjectively, it's normal, but objectively, it's not. So Remeyer says, we go with objectively. This is an atypical way of carrying an item. And therefore, regardless of what work you do and whether you typically walk out that way or not, you're not going to be chayef. It's going to be durabana. However, if this myth and his trade, this is the way that you walk out, he's going to be chayef because this is the normal for him. But other people, but they're going to be exempt. So in, uh, in this statement that said that the tailor should not walk out in that way is going to be uh, uh, according to Rabbi Yehud. All right. So we get take out coffee. <laughs> L'chaim. L'chaim. So um, still no proof of whether or not that we make exera exera. Rabbi says we do, um, uh, Rava says we don't, and the fact that we saw that the, the Chayat uh, should not walk out with his machat uh, tucked in his garment, even uh, Erev Shabbos, that's according to Rehuda, which it would be the Orisa uh, prohibition of carrying uh, this way, because this is for him, subjectively for a tailor, that's the normal way of carrying so, uh, just a little bit uh, reminder about Zav. Zav is, uh, is someone who has a, an emission, not a semen emission. Uh, 
let's call it gonorrhea, but it's an emission that's thicker. And if he sees it three times, uh, so uh, then the, the, the um, then he has to count seven clean days. And if he sees it twice, he doesn't. And so there would be a a, a uh, kiss, some sort of uh, bag or pad that he would put in um, to uh, uh, sort of a cup to to know whether or not he had an emission. And the question is, can he walk out like that in Shabbos? Amalei, so one Bryce has said, that he should not walk out that way while he has that uh, cup there. And if he did, he's going to be exempt because it's an abnormal way of carrying, even though in his position, in his circumstances, it would be. But it's just prohibited, but it's not going to, you don't need a chatas. And we have another verse that says he shouldn't walk out that way. And if he did, it's called carrying and he's chayv chatas. He has to bring a chatas offering. That's also not going to be proof that exera exera. That's talking about the machlek is Rameir of Yehuda. Where Rabbi Meir says it's an abnormal way of wearing, uh, uh, carrying something. So even though in his position, in his situation, it would be typical. But it's abnormal in, in general, and therefore, and therefore, it doesn't count as a Daraisa carrying. And uh, and um, the Rav Yehuda says no, that since in his position it's going to be chayiv, uh, he needs to do so. That counts as uh, being chayiv. Amalei Abaye, even the Shamas of Rav Meir, midi the lav hainu urche, midi the hainu urche mishamasli. So uh, he says no. This is not the same as. Uh, uh, an, uh, um, um, a pencil over the ear. Uh, because all the other ones that we're talking about, it's not a normal way to carry it. Oh, the only way to carry it, uh, uh, the normal way to carry it is ca- it in your hand. However, this device, uh, the only way to wear it is the way this person is wearing it. Uh, that's what its function is. It's a, you know, essentially a, 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 a male sanitary pad. I mean, that's the norm. That, that's the only way to wear it. There is no way to, to carry it. The needle, the, the coin, yeah, the typical way to carry it is in your hand. And therefore, you could say, true, that the, this, this uman, in his trade, he may wear it over his ear, but, but the, you, you carry it. That's what this device is. Uh, that's what this item is. But, uh, but in regards to the zav, this device, that's the only way to carry it. That's the normal way to carry it. And therefore, um, uh, um, the, uh, it, it, even Rabbi Mayer would say that this is uh, not only subjectively to him, but objectively to everybody. This is the only way to carry it. This is a normal way to carry this. Aim of the Shabbos of Rabbi where do we hear Rabbi Meir? Rabbi Urche where it's not the norm for anyone else to carry it this way. And he's the one that's carrying it. But in something else, that this is the norm for him to carry it that way, for everybody to carry it that way. It may not be the norm for everybody to wear it, but anybody wearing it, anybody has this, this is the way they're going to carry it, uh, by wearing it. Because if you wouldn't say that, what about this? The bikas, the Shabbos, the Rebbe Meach, and I'm the Rebbe Chayev, a non a non tradesman that does Gary Larov's work of uh, of uh, um, uh, some woodwork, and he's going to be exempt because he did, because he's not a smith uh, because that's not normal for him. Of course not. Of course he'd be Chayev anyhow. So uh, uh, the fact that that somebody um, is you know is not is doing the typical normal way of of cutting wood. He's doing the, the, the same thing. The fact that he doesn't usually do it, so what? So um, it, the 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 malacha itself is is typical. It's true in, in woodworking as well. If you uh, if you did so in an abnormal way, you utilized a, you know a, a um, utilized a kitchen knife and and you held it with your toes. And you and and that's how you uh, chiseled wood. Uh, that's not uh, you would be exempt from the Torah obligation uh, from the chatas because you did it in an abnormal way. But being an being an amateur does not make you abnormal. 
So if the normal way of carrying this, this cup is by wearing it, uh, whether somebody is a Zav or not, they would be Chayim. So that's the normal way of doing it. That's a Gemara's comparison to question. Ella Amar Amnuna Lekashe, so Amnuna says, indeed, there's no, uh, no question. Can the Zav Baal Shtei Re'iyas, Can the Zav Baal Gimel Re'iyas. It depends whether he's already seen twice, and he must uh, have this device to collect a third time to see whether or not he's going to be a Zav God, or he needs to count seven clean days, or, um, or not. And so, therefore, if he's seen it twice already, he needs to wear this in order to see it a third time. But if he's seen it three times already, so there's no need to, to carry it anymore. And therefore, for him, it's an abnormal way of wearing it. Oh, it's an abnormal thing to be wearing. Agamara says, why? Zav is the the, the the Zav of two days needs it. Why? Because he needs to be able to tell whether he saw a third time. Uh, so there's a check that he needs to do. So therefore, he's wearing it to collect uh, any emission. Well, the third, the, the one who's completely uh, a, a Zav and needs to, needs to count, so he needs to ca- collect it to see that he, that he had a clean day. So he also needs it. So he wants to say, no, what we're talking about is on the third, after he's seen it a third time, so now for that day, it doesn't count as a clean day anyhow. So until Shkia, he doesn't need to wear it. And he doesn't need to wear it for the original three because he's already hit three. So at this point, there's no, there's no reason for him to be wearing this anymore. And for, so for him, it would be an exemption. For him, it would be putter because it's an abnormal thing to walk out that way. Even though that in his position or this particular device, that is the way it's done. Zach the Gemara. Vami Bayale, Kadesh Ali Tam for Caleb. Said you're, you're you're looking at this only from a halachic perspective that the only reason he'd be wearing this is in order to uh in order to uh, know his halachic status, whether it's a clean day or not, whether he's seen three or two. What about just wearing it so that his garment remains clean? Amar Bzeira, Haitana Huda Amar, Kalitsuli Tinov, Loika Khashiv. It must be the this opinion. That says that any uh, 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 anything done just for um, m- uh, making sure something doesn't get soiled, that's not enough to consider it an intentional act, or rather, it's unintentional or not considered uh, an act. Where do we see this? So, um, for the next halacha, we have to uh, introduce a concept of kiyitim uh, kiyutan. In order for produce to be susceptible to tumor, in order for things to be susceptible to tumor, it has to have become wet. And that, um, and that liquid has to have been intentionally put on to the, uh, to the um, uh, product. The thing is that it doesn't have to be an intentional um, act uh, in, entirely, uh, because, or his act entirely, because the Torah says, ki yutad, if, and which is reflexive, if it would be put on, and um, and it's spelled kiyitim with a with a yud, or just a yud without the vav, which tells us that it's uh, he he put it. So it's this in between. It has to be that he wanted it, but uh, it, it could happen on its own, as it were. So uh, uh, the, the the case is if he uh, let's say grapes are pressing, he has he has grapes and they're and the weight of the bunch of grapes causes some of the grapes to ooze, and he wants to collect that juice, so that uh, his intent is going to make it chashiv, and then it's going to be a liquid that's going to make it uh, susceptible to tumor. If he doesn't want that juice, it happened on its own, and he doesn't want it, it's not going to count. That's one example. So we see a case over here, the Tanan we learned. So somebody upturns a vessel on top of a wall, um, so if he does it in order so that the vessel get washed off from the rain, that counts. But if he puts it there in order that just to protect the wall, because he had just cemented it and he doesn't want it to get wet, 
So then the, the, the water collected in that vessel doesn't count as his, his water, and if it then falls on his produce, it's not going to make it susceptible to it. That will not count. And so we see over here that when, when you do something, even though he wants to collect the water in order to protect the wall, that doesn't count as his intentional act. And so too over here, um, when, <coughs> sorry, you're collecting it, not for the information that it gives you, but to protect the garment from not getting dirty, that in and of itself is not, uh, not going to count as a, an intentional act. And we're now on Yud Beis Amadal. So Gemara says, what kind of comparison is that? Me, dummy? Awesome. There, he doesn't need the, the, the liquid at all. He's just trying to protect the wall. Um, uh, over here, he, he actually does need it. It's just that his intent is to, 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 to protect the, the garment. But um, uh, for Shabbos, uh, over here, he, he needs it. There, um, he doesn't need the liquid at all. He'd rather there's no liquid, um, and he doesn't, he doesn't need the liquid in the vessel. The vessel is there to protect the, 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 the garment. The, the water is the problem that we're talking about. On Shabbos, we're talking about the vessel. In other words, uh, in, in regards to Shabbos, we're looking at the, the, uh, the cup, the utensil itself. And that he needs there to protect his garment. In regards to, to uh, in the concept of susceptibility to tuma, it's not the vessel that makes his, his, his produce coming, and that he needs there. He doesn't need the vessel to protect the wall. But what's, what, what, what's making his produce tummy is susceptible to tuma is uh, the, the liquid that will be in there. And that's really something he doesn't care for at all. That's not a part of what he needs. The vessel he's putting there to protect. So we're comparing two different aspects. What we're protecting is the wall. The vessel is, is uh, um, uh, what's there to protect the wall. And that's equivalent to the cup. The, the liquid is what he doesn't need. And that's true here too. He would, doesn't want to have the, the ziva. So rather it's more comparable to the end of that price, um, uh, to the end of... Was at a Mishnah. Uh, and the Sefer, uh, uh, he has a, 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 he has a, a pail or a, or a, a basin that um, some, some, some uh, laugh, something that's le- leaking, that's dripping, drip into it. So what sprays out and what, what, what bounces off, that's, that's uh, not considered Bechiyuta. But whatever remains in the vessel, that is bechiyut, and that remains uh, uh, something that he wanted. Um, and so uh, the 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 uh, bounce off never went into the vessel. Um, but it, so if it, so that that Rashi points uh, brings the mission over there. Where the case is that after we learn that Beishamai say that if something. Um, uh, went into the, uh, uh, um, tripped into the vessel, and then overflowed, that um, uh, it counts as Bechi Yutama because it was in your vessel. Ms. Hill will say that, no, only if he took it and poured it does it count as Bechi Yutama. It's water that he wanted because he poured it. But if it just overflowed, it didn't. And then it says they all agree um, that if it if it bounced off, it, 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 it dripped off, um, uh, it, it does count, um, uh, it doesn't count as Kiyuta. Um, oh, so, so is this kind of like, is this kind of like grandma? I mean, if, if, if you had some, if you had some use for the water, so you intended for there to be water and, and it got on the parents. So that, that would be grandma, wouldn't it? Otherwise you, you didn't intend for the water, you didn't want water. So it's not grandma. Well, I don't know if it's a grama. It's a, it, it, the chiyutan is not doesn't have to be a direct action anyhow. So I don't know if if. if but if you wanted, if you wanted the water, if the water served the purpose for you, 
then it's kiyutan. That's what I'm hearing you saying. Well, not really, because that's that's what I was bringing the case of 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 where where the water is is um, the water is just gathering in his vessel, and then he picks it up to dump it. But he picked it up. That's the idea that he he did collect it. Uh -huh. um, and, and, and Rash says that the, the point is that he could have just had, if he just wanted to protect the wall, he didn't have to collect the water. He could have turned it upside down and then just let it run off the outer side where it would, have, would not have collected. Mm -hmm. The fact that he collected and then dumped it means that it's now his action. And that's what the comparison is to over here, um, uh, that, uh, that it would count as, um, uh, uh, it, 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 and it's it, the part that he doesn't want that he didn't collect. The parts that bounced off are going to be without intent. Uh, but the part, if he had just collected it, meaning the fact that he left it upside down, uh, up, uh, upright, and allowed for the water to collect in there, and then he dumped it, does count as bechiyutan. It does count as his action. So Ella Abaye v'Rava Damar Tavai Lekasha. So rather Abaye Rava both say Harav Yehuda Rabbi Shimon. Here's a, a, the basis of Malachas Machsheves. We talked a little bit about it. I'm going to have to talk a little bit more about it. This is a, a fundamental um, Machlokas that comes up um, uh, throughout the Masechta, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon. In general, Rabbi Yehuda is going to be uh, 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 um, broader in his intention of what intent could, what counts as intent. And Rabbi Shimon is going to be very limiting in what counts as intent. And for Shabbos, we need Melechas Mach Shabbos. It needs to be intentional action. If you have an, a, a form of unintentional action, it's not gonna count. Here, the way Rashi explains it, not everybody agrees with Rashi, or many don't agree with Rashi, but we're gonna go with Rashi for now for this moment. And, and Rash, Rashi interprets Melechas She'en Etzricha Legufa, or Melechas, uh, 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 um, a Melecha that you don't want for itself. That's Malacha She'ina Tzricha Lekufa. The Gemara tells us if somebody carries a bed with a deceased on it outside, he's going to be hotter. Because the bed is not what he's intending to carry. The bed is only a, a, a functional use in, in the manner within which to carry the deceased. And the deceased he doesn't want to carry. Rashi says something uh, 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 shocking. He doesn't want to carry it because he doesn't want the person to be dead. And therefore, that doesn't count as an intentional action. And others disagree with the Rashi. Like, well, what do you mean? But in this scenario, he wants to carry the deceased. So the bed, they, everybody agrees, would not count as a malachas machsheves because it's not, he's not carrying the bed for itself. He's carrying the bed for, uh, he's carrying the, bed for, uh, uh, um, for the deceased in order to carry the deceased. So in, in and of itself, it's not going to count. And this is true with many uh, things that Gemara is going to tell us later um, that we have cases of if somebody's carrying food in a basket. Uh, the basket is, is, is secondary. It's not the intentional carrying. It's the food. And then we'll have to evaluate whether there's a chiv on the food or not. And the same goes for many other things it, because it's, it, 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 it itself is not what he's intending to do. So Malachas Machshavas says we, we look at the actual intentional um, act. What is he intending to primarily do? So the bed would be exempt. Uh, uh, on the bed, he'd be exempt. And Rashid says the reason he's exempt on the, on the um, uh, deceased person is because he doesn't want that person to be, uh, um, uh, to be deceased. Um, and, but Rabbi Yehuda says, no, he is chayim. That, uh, it, that, uh, that counts as intentional act because that's what he wants to do. So the same thing is going to be over here. Uh, Rashi says, what's the, uh, why is he exempt on the cup? Because the cup is not an action he wants, um, even though that he needs it at this point, but he doesn't want to have the uh, ziva uh, in any case. So therefore, it's not intentional, even though he's clearly doing it, but it's the, the cup is there for the ziva, and the ziva is something he doesn't want. And so it's going to be similar. Rabbi Shimon would exempt it. Daraisa. Obviously, you're not allowed to do so Dirabana because you're doing the act and it's only a lack of intent and that can change easily uh, or, or that we can fool ourselves with. And therefore, of course, the, that's an obvious. Gzeira Chazal said, you can't, you, 
can't do a malacha even if you don't intend because you may intend. Um, but uh, the malachas machshavas um, would exempt you from the chatas. And uh, Rav Yudah is going to hold, no, this counts as malachas machshavas. If I have to take the call, it's my daughter getting on a plane in Eretz Yisrael to come here and I need to make sure that everything's fine. So I'm sorry. Um, uh, so so uh, that's the, the uh, ex- explanation here of Malachas Machsheves or not. Um, Tanad Ver Vishma. Yeah, Tanad Ver So we have a Brisa, a Tesefta here. Yotzi Adam Betfilim Be'er of Shabbos and Chashech. A person's allowed to walk out with Tefillin um, a Friday afternoon, even though. Uh, he may end up wearing it on Shabbos. My time, I keep an Amar Rabbah Baruchuna Chayav Adam Lamashmesh B'Tfilin B'Chol Shabbos Shal. Since the halacha is that somebody wearing Tfilin, he has to constantly be aware that he's wearing Tfilin and that he's connected to Hashem and that he's uh, therefore he has to touch the Tfilin the whole time. So to make sure that he has the awareness of what it is that he's that he's doing, the Kalvachomer Mitzitz, and we learn that as a Kalvachomer from the uh, the tzitz, the plate. That said, Kodosh Hashem, that the Kohen Gadol wore on his forehead. Matzit she'im bo yalas kara achas. Tzitz only had Hashem's name once. Amr atay riva haya mitzchot tamid. It has to be on his forehead always. Shalei seyar baitim emenu. Meaning, always meaning that he must be uh, uh, um, on his, um, uh, what is it, say, al mitzchot. It already says that where it is. So why does it say to tell us that it has to be intentional? It has to be on his forehead, meaning it has to be in his con- in his active consciousness the whole time. Uh, tefillin, sheyesh ba'askaras harbe, tefillin, which has Hashem's name many times. Hashem alekeinu, Hashem echad, v'avtes Hashem alekecha, etc. It has many times. Allah has come of a comma for sure. You need to be aware of the tefillin the whole time. Yeah. And therefore, uh, you're allowed to wear it on Friday because you'll remember that you're wearing it. And we're not worried about that. The only reason that uh, a, a, you know, a needle uh, that you stick into your garment or a pencil that you stick on your ear is because you're not conscious and you're so used to it as a, as a smith. You're so used to it that you're, you're going to forget that it's there and you're going to walk out that way in Shabbos. But to fill it, you won't, you won't forget. You don't, you don't. You never get used to it. You're constantly aware that you're wearing tefillin. Well, it, right? We, we hope that. But that's the that's the the the, the uh, proper way. And Tanya, Chanan Yoyim Meir Chayvan Lamashvish Bebig Day Erev Shabbos and Chashecha. We have a brayz that says a Chananya says that a person has to uh, uh, Shabbos just as Shabbos is coming in, a person has to check their garments and feel and make sure that they're not carrying anything. They don't have a, 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 a needle stuck in their lapel. They don't have um, something in their pocket. They were not intending to be there. And then uh, they may walk out. Um, uh, this is a great, um, a, a, a big halacha, uh, an important halacha concept for Shabbos. The idea that uh, you have consciousness before Shabbos to make sure that everything is ready and that your garments are, are ready for being worn, that there's nothing, no michshel, no stumbling can happen from, uh, from uh, carelessness. Just wondering, is that, is that the din if you've been Arab? N- no. Uh, if you have an Arab the size of ours, where you never walk out of it on Shabbos, that wouldn't be the case. Uh, but nevertheless, I, the concept is there. The concept is, is not really only for you know, uh, tapping your, your pockets to make sure there's nothing in there. It's an overall consciousness. W- what do I have? What, uh, 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 you know, do I have any muksa? Do I have, is everything set? Is everything in, in place so that I can, I, I can observe Shabbos properly? That's, that, that's the, um, the, the general concept. Uh, it, 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 uh, the, the, the statement is said in regards to checking your, checking your pockets, as it were, to make sure you're not going to carry, but it's true either way. Leifala Eskela. So the Mishnah further said, don't, um, don't um, 
smoke out your garments to, to, to get rid of the lice. So what's the reason? In don't do it general by day, nothing to do with the with the fire. Shemi because maybe you're gonna kill a lice. And we'll see, there's a machlaik as to whether you're, you're prohibited killing a lice. Rabbi Eliezer, he the Tanya, Rabbi Eliezer, I'm a hurricane of Shabbos, Kila Hare Gummel. And Rabbi Eliezer says, killing a lie, a louse, is like killing a, a, a camel. Let's say they're a, a small, tiny creature, a, a large creature, either way, you're not allowed to kill on Shabbos. We'll see later which prohibition of, uh, of the 39 is killing on Shabbos, but is killing. But nevertheless, you're not allowed to kill, and therefore, no. And Neshama is going to be prohibited and see not allowed to kill a louse. Uh, and therefore, he said, it, it says, don't smoke it, because if you do, you may end up killing it, and that's prohibited. Um, however, um, and then the second teaching is, don't read by a candle, because maybe you're going to, you're going to tilt the candle to get more light, and by doing so, you're increasing the flame, and that's, and that's uh, 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 the... the the Torah prohibition of uh, of um, of havara of uh, igniting a fire, or it can make the flame go out a little bit, and that's going to be uh, machabet. It's going to be extinguishing. And Gemara says, or idilma tarbay mishum shemayata, or both of them are talking about you're doing it at night, and you can't read by a candle because maybe you're going to. Um, uh, uh, tilt the flame, and the same is uh, why you're not allowed to smoke your garment. In other words, is, is there a, 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 a comma or a colon, a, a, a semicolon in the Mishnah? It doesn't say, don't, uh, don't smoke your, your garment, period. Don't read because maybe you're going to tilt the candle. Or do we say, or uh, do we read it all as one? Don't smoke your garment and don't read at a candle because maybe you're going to tilt the candle and then maybe you're going to tilt the candle is, go, is going on on both of them and the both is the same reason. You may be looking for the louse and so you're not going to have enough light so you may tilt the candle to get better light or you're reading and you're not going to be able to see well and so you're going to tilt the candle to get better light. Tashama. And put them with the right there. So the Brysa says you don't smoke the garment and you don't read to a candle again so the gemara thought since it says it more uh, with uh, um um it doesn't say don't you follow as caleb his vessels his clothing it just says you're not allowed to smokeify um that is, and then it says immediately and don't read to a candle that it seems like it's the both or it says no me it's no more indicative than our mishnah so we have a Bryce that says explicitly, don't uh, um, get rid of the lice uh, by, by, uh, to a candle and don't read to a candle. Both of them are, are, uh, um, uh, b- both of them are uh, uh, on account of you may tilt the candle. So, and these are one of the two of the halachas that was said in the attic of Hanania, and we'll see a lot of halachas that was said there um, uh, uh, in in order to uh, to uh, protect Shabbos and other halachas. So from this price, you see that they're both in uh, on account of maybe you're going to tilt the candle. You also. Uh, not allowed to use a candle to distinguish between your own garments and the garments of your wife. That's only in the people of Mechuzah, uh, because they wore um, broad uh, um, um, uh, clothing. So the, the wife's uh, skirts and the, the man's um, uh, robes were similar. Avamnei made the yadi. But the bnei in chaklita, the the garments were more distinguishable, and so therefore there was not a concern that you would need to tilt the candle to see whether it was yours or your wife's. So you allowed to. But the because the the elders, that's only of the elder, of the latest, maybe the the young the young people, they had more distinguishable garments as well. The idea is if it's similar garments, then you can't 
uh, th then you can't uh, tell easily. And so there's a concern you may not tell the difference between your wife's skirt and your kilt. And so it, you, you can't do that in front of a candle. But um, uh, if, if it's clearly distinguishable, it's not a problem. Um, uh, this is not only with Shabbos, uh, but once we're talking about delousing your garment, uh, it said you don't do that in a, in a public space because it's disgusting. Because of covet, it's not. It's not. Uh, uh, it's disgusting to other people. But similarly, we said, "Amrav Yehuda, Amri Lara Ben Nechemia, ain't oisin apatoisin." They're not allowed to do. Uh, they would some of them take some a, 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 a um, medicine, um, a potion that would help people um, uh, bring up their food, toss their cookies, barf, whatever term you want. Mershus Arabim Nei Akavit. You don't do that in a public space because it's disgusting. And, and because of honor. Uh, all right, we're out of time for today. Um, tomorrow we'll continue with uh, some of um, how you de-louse a garment, killing, an, uh, killing a louse on Shabbos. And um, we'll go on to some halachas of visiting the sick, etc. See somebody made a comment, what's that? What are we going to do with Dafyomi on Shabbos? I'm going to try and send out a note today about times, and maybe we'll do it on Matzah Shabbos um, by, via Zoom as well. I'll send out some ideas, um, but uh, we can't do it in person, so we'll have to figure this out. We're all uh, learning. It's a learning curve. Rabbi Rocho is uh, teaching us a lot of new lessons and not a, a lot of new ways of interacting with people, caring for people. Um, uh, taking care of ourselves. Um, we have to stay positive. We have to stay happy. We have to continue doing the avoda that we're doing. I sent out a, a message the other day, but we have to look at uh, David Amelech says in Tehillim that uh, um, the Yeshua comes from Beis Metsuda, a house that is a fortress where in, we are in a fortress, but we have to make it a home, a home where the Shekhinah is there, we're learning Torah there, davening there, and we have to uh, keep it uh, uh, as, as holy and pure, and Shem will continue doing that. Please reach out to me if there are any things you need uh, throughout this uh, difficult time. Um, I will send out uh, 